Homage to the Buddha, homage to the Dharma, homage to the Sangha. This is the dwelling place of those whose wisdom is as vast and far-reaching as space itself, who are fully cognizant of all things in the three temporal worlds, who are completely free from hindrances, dependent on nothing and needing nothing, the ones who fully are. Maitreya, who we celebrate today, is one of the central bodhisattvas in Buddhism. Shakyamuni Buddha predicted that Maitreya would be the next Buddha, the Buddha yet to come. But Maitreya is not just sitting in Tashita heaven, twiddling his thumbs, waiting for the day some 4,000 to 4.5 billion years away depending on who you ask, when he becomes Buddha. He is learning how to become Buddha. He is considering all aspects of Buddha. He is experiencing what leads to suffering and what leads to the end of suffering. Maitreya is studying the self. And from this study, Maitreya is learning to practice compassion. His name, Metta, Maitri, means loving kindness. So Maitreya practices loving kindness, radical kindness. May all beings be happy, loved, and cared for. May all beings gain wisdom. The Buddha picked Maitreya as the Buddha yet to come, not because he was the wisest or the most devotional, but because of his kind nature. Maitreya is also learning to practice patience. He will be the next Buddha in how many years? That requires patience not a passive, waiting-around patience, but an attentive, active patience. While Maitreya is waiting, he will do his utmost to save all beings. Maitreya is learning to practice generosity. In China, the 10th century monk, Hote, with his big belly, is seen as Maitreya. In the final ox herding picture, after Hote has subdued his mind and realized the truth, he returns to the marketplace. He is frequently depicted carrying a sack of candies and toys for the children he meets on his wandering. One of the many stories about Hote tells how a more traditional monk doubting Hote, stopped him in the street and asked, what is the fundamental meaning of the Buddha's teaching? Hote immediately dropped his sack, demonstrating how we let go of our attachments. The monk then asked, what is the actualization of the teaching? And Hote picked up his sack and walked on, returning to the world to help all beings. Note that Hote doesn't use any words in his response. Again, Maitreya does not just sit in heaven above the fray, waiting to become the exalted Buddha. He sees the work to be done and is doing the practice that comes to him. Is it our vow to do the same? We, like Maitreya, can also become Buddha. We can pay attention and see for ourselves 
what leads to suffering and to the end of suffering. As we learn, we can practice compassion, patience, and generosity. Where is Maitreya? Where is the Pure Land? Tozan Ryokai, the ninth century monk in our lineage, once told his disciples, there is no Maitreya up in heaven and there is no Maitreya down on earth. Maitreya is not Maitreya and so Maitreya is Maitreya. Even though this is so, doesn't everyone want to see Maitreya? Referring to Ryokai's words four centuries later, Great Master Dogen raised his fountain scepter and said, You have already met Maitreya. Already having met him, everyone tried to say whether Maitreya, Maitreya exists or does not exist. Dogen put down his scepter, left his meditation seat, and circumambulated the hall. Maitreya is not born. Maitreya does not die. There is no before and there is no after. Maitreya does not exist. Maitreya does exist. How can we see Maitreya? Later, Dogen said to his disciples, If I expound Buddha Dharma to fellow practitioners, <coughs> I cannot avoid my eyebrows <coughs> falling out. As with Pinocchio and his long nose, Japanese folklore teaches that if we lie, our eyebrows will fall out. Dogen continues, if I do not expound Buddha Dharma to my fellow practitioners, I will go to hell faster <coughs> than an arrow. Beyond these two alternatives, what can I do today for you, my fellow practitioners? What can I do today, right now? When Dogen is teaching, everything is a lie and everything is the truth. Everything is this and everything is that. Dogen paused and then said, Above the heavens there is no Maitreya. Below the earth there is no Maitreya. But seeing his face is superior to hearing his name. If you meet him in person, you cannot be deceived. If you meet him right now on your meditation seat, you will know Maitreya and not be fooled. Where is Maitreya? Perhaps there is a heaven where Maitreya resides, and perhaps Maitreya is not bound by time or space. There is never Maitreya, and there is always Maitreya. The only place you will see him is in this moment, right in front of you, and seeing his face is superior to hearing his name. Seeing Maitreya is direct experience. Hearing his name is one removed, hearing of Maitreya. This is the dwelling place. It is up to us to see it. Let's look at the Vimalakirti Sutra, written around the third century. In this sutra, the Buddha teaches that when the mind of a bodhisattva is pure, then his Buddha land will be pure. The Buddha's disciple, Shariputra, then asks, when the world-honored one became a bodhisattva, surely his intentions were pure. 
Why then is this Buddha land so filled with impurities? A question for our time. The Buddha responded, It is the failings of living beings that prevent them from seeing the marvelous purity of the land of the Buddha. Our eyes are blinded by our own greed, hatred, and delusion. And we cannot see the purity of this world. Shariputra replies, When I look at this land, I see it full of knolls and hollows, thorny underbrush, sand and gravel, dirt, rocks, many mountains, filth and defilement. This too is familiar. We believe that what we see is not sufficient, has no beauty. The Buddha replies, It is just that your mind has highs and lows and does not rest on Buddha wisdom. Therefore you see this land as impure. The Bodhisattva treats all things and beings, each one of them, with perfect equality. His deeply searching mind is pure, and because it rests on Buddha wisdom, it can see the purity of this Buddha land. The mind rests on Buddha wisdom, the mind that has no highs and lows, no separation. I read this as, if we do not divide things into good and evil, right and wrong, pure and impure, happiness and misery, Maitreya in heaven and Maitreya on earth, If our minds do not divide, but instead reside in emptiness, suchness, then we see the pure land. Maitreya is not Maitreya, and so Maitreya is Maitreya. No division. Maitreya doesn't exist, and we can see him. When we sit in meditation, we are engaging in the such suchness of things, ultimate reality, the universal as opposed to our particular lives. Suchness is not something to be acquired, but, but rather a way things are experienced. We cannot grasp after or attain suchness. Whatever person that you are, whatever mind and body that you have, you are a person of suchness, and you can see Maitreya. You can be Maitreya. I might even say you are the Buddha yet to come. In the Vimalakirti Sutra, Vimalakirti is a lay Buddhist with deep wisdom who feigns illness so that the Buddha's disciples and bodhisattvas will call on him and he can engage in Dharma debate. He wants to show them up. The Buddha asks many of his disciples and bodhisattvas to visit Vimalakirti and they essentially respond, no way because in the past, Vimalakirti has revealed the shaky spiritual ground they stand on. When Maitreya is asked to visit Vimalakirti, he replies that he is not competent to visit Vimalakirti, because Vimalakirti challenged the prophecy that Maitreya would be the next Buddha, and Maitreya had no answer for him. Vimalakirti asked Maitreya, when is it that he thinks he might become Buddha? Not in the past, as it is gone. Not in the present, because it is impermanent and can't be counted on. 
not in the future, because the future will never arrive. Then Vimala Kurdi says that perhaps Maitreya was given the prophecy because of some birth or death that pertains to suchness. But wait a minute. In suchness, there is no birth or death. So now where are we? Vimala Kurdi then says to Maitreya, All living beings are a part of suchness and all other things as well are a part of suchness. The sages and worthy ones too are a part of suchness. Even you, Maitreya, are a part of suchness. So if you have been given a prophecy of enlightenment, then all living beings should likewise be able to attain it. Why? because suchness knows no dualism or differentiation, no dualism. Suchness knows no dualism or differentiation. Suchness includes everything. In suchness, there is no judgment, no separation, no obstructions, no Maitreya. Just, this is the way it is. In the end, the Buddha entrusts the teaching of the Vivmalakirti Sutra to Maitreya. Not yet a Buddha, but actively looking, actively patient, generous and kind. The Buddha yet to come. Perhaps he entrusts the teaching to Maitreya because Maitreya is timeless, boundless, and resides in emptiness. And perhaps so do we. This is the dwelling place of those free of dependencies who traverse the universe as unhindered as the wind in the sky who are content to go seeking without any chance of attaining anything, and who are free of any sense of anything going anywhere. This is the dwelling place. Homage to the Buddha, homage to the Dharma, homage to the Sangha.